Hey, Tile friends, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Tile Money, the podcast where I discuss the business of being a tile contractor. I am a tile contractor myself here in the state of California. Now, Tile Money Podcast is brought to you by the NTCA, National Tile Contractors Association. And this episode is sponsored by Schluter. I went down here recently this month to one of the Schluter ongoing education classes. These are hands-on courses. There's two of them. They're both two-day classes. And I was able to interview the, the teacher, the, the classroom educator, Don Corliss. He works for Schluter. Before Schluter, he was a tile contractor himself. Uh, and I also interviewed my friend Ryan Clark. Ryan is another licensed tile contractor here in the state of California. Every time I talk to Ryan, I benefit. He's a fourth-generation tile installer. So it's nice to have a friend like that, and I hope he feels the same about me. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about my my experience attending this Schluter education class, my opinion on it, uh, what you can expect if you attend, you know? So I want to give you an overall picture. And at the end of the at the end of the interview, uh, stay tuned for another edition of the Tile Money Tips. I've been sitting down with Ron Nash from Ladycrete, and we've been discussing negotiation tactics. So look forward to that, friends. These are really benefiting a lot of you. And thank you for letting us know. Thank you for getting interactive with us. So let me paint a picture. <laughs> this is the way I do the Schluter class. And maybe this will help you plan out yours if you haven't been or if you're going to go to another one, right? And so I'm in Central California. And I, I elect to go to the class in Southern California uh, until recently, that was the closest one to me. Um, and so what we do is we get in the car, it's about a four or five hour drive. Now, if you're driving from out of town like that, Schluter's going to put you up in a hotel for two nights. It's a two day class. They put you up in a hotel for two nights. We leave a day early. We leave on Monday and we elect to purchase our own room um, at the same hotel. The hotel is kind enough to extend us to the 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 discount, you know, now no guarantees that that's going to be your case, but that's my experience. I call the hotel. I tell them I'm coming with Schluter. I'd like a third night. They say, yes, sir. They give me the discount. Easy peasy. Now, the reason I like to go to Anaheim is I have a three-year-old daughter. Guess what she likes? That's right. She likes to go to the happiest place on earth. <laughs> and it just so happens my friend Ryan Clark has a three-year-old daughter. So it works out beautifully. We take our families to Disneyland on, on Tuesday. We're going to spend the day. We enjoy the heck out of it. We have a grand old time. And friends, there's an old saying. I don't know if you've heard it. Nothing wrong with mixing business with pleasure, right? It's a great way to go through life. It's one of the perks of being a business owner. And frankly, if you're not taking advantage of it, you're missing out. Because when you can mix a little business with pleasure, life is good. <laughs> now... Uh, let's see here. Let's get back on track. So after Disneyland, uh, the next day is the first day. Uh, so myself and Ryan, we, we drive ourselves or hop on the bus to the, to the workshop. Some of these workshops are going to be in the, in the hotel, depending on where you're at. We, we travel about a mile or two to go to this workshop. Our wives take the kids back to Disneyland. So they're, they're enjoying their, their two days as well. Now, uh, while we're at the class, you know, we're learning about tile. We're learning about tile installation. We're learning about the history of tile. There's some things you're going to learn that you did not know. This is the case with everybody I talk to. You're going to have a good time. Uh, they make it lighthearted. They make it fun. They tell jokes. Um, so I'm going to talk to you. I want to talk, highlight five reasons to go. Uh, number one, I, I kind of already mentioned it. I think it's free. They don't charge you. In fact, they give you the two nights room. They give you breakfast. They give you lunch both days and they give you dinner the first day at a very nice hotel. At a, excuse me. Well, the hotel is nice as well at a very nice restaurant. They give you dinner. Um, so, so that's the number one perk, right? I, you know, I know, I know I like free stuff and I believe you do as well. Now, Number two, tile education. I already mentioned it. They are not just going to sit down and shove Schluter down your throat. They've already accomplished that by getting you there. You're going to see a lot of orange, all right? But 
they understand and it the company was built on on the basis that uh we need solutions to our problems right and they understand uh tile it, they have a rich history in the trade they understand the importance of educating everybody about why methods proper methods and procedures are needed in this trade frankly they're doing a great job of that because they invite everybody to these courses these classes uh the third reason is networking um networking is 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 how business is done i it's probably how the, the biggest business deals are made after hours networking with peers um you get to network with other tile contractors of course that's always cool um you get to network with with general contractors if you go to a local area you know you're going to meet general contractors it's the opportunity for more business you're going to meet designers uh potentially architects potentially uh um supply house uh owners or managers so you're starting am i starting to paint a picture here this is a powerful thing for business this is what a business needs to do frankly if you're not networking you're missing out uh number fourth the fourth reason you look like a professional <laughs> and what i mean by this is you bring it back to everybody in your uh in your network your supply house people uh your showroom you know where you pick up your materials you let them know hey i just got back from this uh two day class schluter it was really cool this is what i learned this is this is what i did you know um you let everybody on facebook know let all your friends know let your old customers know this would make a good blog post a good newsletter uh email them i i've been talking to you about the importance of staying in contact with our past customers uh damian i i interviewed damian i said well how do you how do you keep your referrals coming damian if you if you didn't uh listen to that go back and listen to it i think you'll be surprised at the simple answer stay in touch with people i mean it's not that hard you know you got to stay in touch with people this is a way this is a reason to stay in touch with your past customers send out a mass email to your favorite customers letting them know and sending them a picture hey look you know you know my daughter's growing up I just got back from this 2-day workshop where I learned about tile. I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in my business. You look like a a professional. And you got to let people know. You got to put these things to work for you. Uh the fifth reason is it's fun. I already mentioned it. I had a good time. The whole the whole experience. Even, you know, during the classroom, it's not, you know, they don't they know they know they need to keep our attention. They know our backs hurt, our knees hurt. Uh, they don't make you sit there the whole time. It's it's interactive. Uh, class two is a little more hands on. You get you get up a little bit more, uh, but even in class one, you get up. Um, they give you good food. They they give you good jokes. They're doing a really good job of that. So I enjoyed it. I I really positive you will as well. And um, so those are five reasons to attend the Schluter education class. And if you're just uh, hell bent on not attending, you know that's your business. But I do highly recommend you you get some continued education uh, in some form or way. Uh, NTCA has various ways you can get this continued education. Uh, they're doing hands-on classes themselves throughout the nation here. They're doing uh, online workshops for for yourself and or your employees. Continued education. Um, they're doing uh, webinars. And a variety of interactive ways to get education. Uh, CTEF is another way you can get education. Ceramic Tile uh, Education Foundation. Okay, it's in the name. <laughs> yeah, uh, they have a variety of of programs. I, I'm not even going to attempt to name them all. I'm going to send you a link uh, under the YouTube video or uh, in the description of this uh, episode, wherever you're listening to this on iTunes. Or Spotify or whatever. Look at the link or look at the description, and if I fail to do this, let me know. But it'll be in there. And check these out. You know, get continued education for the reasons I listed above. All five reasons. So, friends, enjoy this interview, and I'll talk to you soon. Hello, Tile friends. Welcome back to another episode of Tile Money, the podcast where we discuss the business of tile. My name is Luke Miller. I am a tile contractor myself here in the state of California. 
And today I'm sitting down with Don Corliss and Ryan Clark. Uh, Ryan is a tile contractor. Don works for Schluter. We've just uh, finished kind of day one of class two of the Schluter education. So we want to talk about Schluter and want to dive into Ryan's business. Uh, first of all, Don, would you introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from. My name is Don Corliss. I'm a uh, former tile contractor and I live in Sacramento, California. I've worked for Schluter for uh, going on my 15th year. Okay, excellent. Uh, Ryan, how about yourself? Where are you from? Ryan Clark. I'm from San Diego, California, and I'm fourth generation tile contractor and been tiling since I was a kid and still uh, doing the best I can to perfect the trade and make a business out of it. Nice, nice. So your, your great grandfather was a tile installer, is that correct? Yeah, my great grandfather came over from Norway, landed up in uh, LA area and went to work for a union company and uh, started his own union company. And uh, after that, my grandfather moved down to San Diego to the country with my dad and uncle and started a business down there and just kept Kept, kept, with at it. It. kept wow. at it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a rich history. Um, were you able to work with your, your grandfather then? Or how no, far... I, I never worked with my grandfather. He died young, but then I was able to work with my dad ever since I was a kid and we became business partners and worked together and, okay. you know, got to learn a lot of the old ways of doing things and just, uh, got trained the right way to yeah. really take attention to detail and do jobs right. Yeah. That's excellent. And I know uh, it sounds like it's paid off because from what I understand, you still work for some of the same customers, the same general contractors that your grandpa did. Did I hear that correct? Yeah. Day? So uh, one of the contractors, my grandfather did his first house. Okay. We've done every house that he's built for uh, over the last 30 years. And wow. in fact, I still doing houses for him right now. Yeah, that's awesome. So we'll dive into that a little bit later, but I, I wanted to highlight that because that really shows friends how a uh, tile business, you know, done right, um, can be such a sustainable business. I mean, you could pass it on to generation to generation and it really does, um, last the test of time if you do things right and, and really impress your, your customers. So congratulations yeah, on that. Sure. That's good. It's Thanks. nice that you're carrying on the, the, the name there. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and friends, I've known, uh, Ryan for almost like 15 years. So we, we go back a ways and we're, um, we've done some tile work together and, He's taught me a, a few things. I call him when, when things get hectic. But, um, <laughs> but recently, you know, about six, seven, eight months ago, he started using the Schluter products. Of course, Southern California is a uh, is, is rich in in the tile industry and has its has its own ways, um, mostly mud. So we're going to dive into that a little bit later. But um, let's let's dive. Don, can I ask you from your perspective? Um, describe what happened today. These Schluter classes. You've done how many of them? I've been uh, in the education department for about five years. This is going in my 15th, my 15th year with the company, fifth year in the education department. We do approximately, or I do approximately 45 of these classes uh, every every year annually. Okay. Um, I work from coast to coast and border to border. So I'll do a combination of part ones and part twos. We'll typically do four to five part one classes for every part two class that we do. Just we have enough customers to farm through the that are interested to, to move on to the next phase of the of the program so you know the the part twos are a little bit more interactive as far as uh, installation of products yeah than the part ones yeah excellent so so you're doing about 45 i mean that's almost you know one a week yeah um you know minus your vacation time yeah, and guess my wife wants to travel for vacation yeah so yeah. you can add three more weeks onto there that i go somewhere right on yeah, yeah. so you're on the road all yeah, i look forward to a your... weekend a week at home right on i yeah i bet you do i bet you do so 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 if you're doing that many how many classes overall is shooter holding uh, annually there, there are five other speakers like myself okay and so we we annually will run well, i'll tell you what we did last year we did 302 classes okay amongst all of the different uh, instructors, and then we did uh, approximately ten thousand to ten thousand five hundred people through the class. Okay. So this year we're seeing uh, about a ten percent, or at least from my perspective, about a ten percent increase in the number of attendees in the classes. Really? So typically uh, we've averaged about thirty-five per class. So far, year to date, this year I've averaged close to fifty. Oh wow! So it's been uh, there's been a lot more interest. 
a lot more excitement about the products. Um, but I'm not exactly sure where it's all coming from at this point. Okay. But there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of positive things being said about the trades, learning skill. Uh, certainly doesn't help that they're you know home construction remodelings up and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So that's yeah, that's a huge benefit. I'm sure after all this time, it, it must feel like you've taught everybody. Every you person know, out there. I was I was extremely uh, concerned about that yeah. when I started this job. At what point do we get to where we have spoken with everybody that was is willing to listen? Yeah, you know, and so far this year in, in part one classes, they're the best uh, barometer for this as I've done. Uh, this is my 20th class this year, and I've done 17 part ones. And I've only, only had in the part ones less than 10 people that have attended a class before. Okay. So of those, you know, 16 times 50 people in a class, yeah, very small percentage of people that have came to the class before. So interesting. Not as many as uh, as one would think. Yeah. A lot yeah. more interest. Yeah. In your opinion, why is Schluter so focused on these classes? Well, this comes from uh, Mr. Schluter himself. Okay. This was something that he, you know, when he when he came to this market in the uh, in the U.S., it was really important to him that that we reestablish ourselves in the trade of education. Yeah. Because we what we were we were losing was uh, a lot of the apprenticeship programs, a lot of the um, educational programs that that would that would kind of uh, move you through the. I suppose the apprenticeships and things like that to get you to a, to a, um, you know, a competent, I wouldn't say competent, that's probably not a good word, but, but an educated mm. tile installer that knew, yeah. you know, everything was going on. And something he's always said is you can't sell or use our products unless you understand them. Okay. And the education part came from understanding more about the products. So that's really where the, it comes from. Uh, it comes from the top. I like that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Ryan, from, from your viewpoint, how, what did you learn today? I mean, why why would a fourth generation tile contractor, tile installer, your license in the state of California? I mean, what are you benefiting from being here? You know, especially the first class. Uh, looking back at that, I went to a local Dal Tile and I talked to one of the reps, Tim Shockey, and he was showing me some of the products, and he explained that you can use foam and get a flat wall, which is something that. Uh, growing up in mud and floating showers, I thought that that was the only way you could ever get a shower square, uh, do the prep right. I was all about prep and you have to have, you know, just spot on work, you know, nothing else will uh, suffice. Yeah. But at the same time, I was sick of doing uh, mud work because it's dirty and heavy. Okay. And I was looking for something else. So I didn't want to install the product until I did the class because I wanted to understand how it works and see if I'm going to stand behind this and put it in somebody's house, it has to be a premium product if I'm selling it. So going to the first class, I was blown away by the fact that it wasn't so much that it was a sales pitch. Mm -hmm. It was just training to understand why the product was designed the way it is. Okay. And then seeing um, hands-on, especially with this one, just seeing the possibilities that are out there uh, with the Schluter product product. I mean, it's really sky's the limit. You can design whatever you want and it's designed for ease of use function and something that's going to hold up forever. I mean, something yeah. that you can really stand behind. And it's, it's nice to see the trainers and the reps are excited about what they're talking about and also the value to it. You see that these products have a reason why they're designed the way they are. You understand why they work together. It's not just reading a brochure and trying to figure it out on the site. May I add something to that? Yeah, definitely. This week, there's a, there's multiple levels of our, of our educational program. Mm -hmm. This week, going on in South Carolina, there's something we put together called a mud class to where we take, and, and uh, there's no doubt what you've learned and done over the years and, and I was exposed to in the very beginning is ultimately a very good way to install product, get you where you need to be, flat, true, plumb walls, all that. The mud class that we're doing in South Carolina, and they're limited to there at this point, kind of integrates that uh, that interchange between both systems. Mm -hmm. How our system can work with uh, with mud installation. You don't have to pick a you know a side and, and and go one way or the other. The two things can work together to get you really ideally the the perfect installation. Yeah, and I uh, going along with that, we were even talking about it. In my opinion, the absolute bulletproof premium installation would be 
a floated shower with curdy on top well, of it. That's what they're doing. That's what curdy. they're doing today. Yeah. And that's the only way I would do a floated shower now. I wouldn't do a water in, water out just because yes, they work. Yes, I've never had a shower failure, but you always have that water in the pans and in it's always something that's going to be an issue where the curdy on top of the mud, I mean, it's just the Schluter waterproofing is the best that I've seen out there. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you bringing that up, Don and Ryan. Uh, I saw that on social media and I, I forgot to ask, I kind of forgot about it, um, but I'm glad you brought that up. That's such an interesting thing that Schluter does because you would think um, they would maybe want to suppress other methods or something, but that's not the case. They want to, they want to help us contractors succeed. Um, I'm doing a sh uh, th that same exact uh, method in three showers right now in Pismo Beach because it's a uh, marble rectified and the large shower is like six by eight and it it can be more difficult the larger the shower to get your to get your walls true and plumb and flat and and with this style of tile I I opted for for mud with curdy on top and then the linear drains of course so the whole thing is yeah, we, we don't want to suppress anything yeah what we're trying to ultimately get to is is uh, creating as close to the the perfect tile installation as uh, as we can get. Yeah. And if it means a combination of of doing a couple things uh, properly, yeah. then that's what we'll do. Yeah. And, and the building methods have changed over the years. Um, so one thing I appreciate about Schluter and having this in my tool belt and, and the knowledge is solutions to problems. Can you tell us about a couple common problems that some of your products solve for tile contractors? You know, for instance, one of the examples of uh, that Ryan may have mentioned here in Curdy Board was the ability to have a flat wall mm -hmm. to uh, to install tile to. If you if you come into a situation where you've got uh, you know some studs that are out of plumb, and, and I know that, that probably never happens, yeah, that you can have the ability to to wet shim the studs behind the Curdy Board yeah. or wet shim or spot bond a block wall and attach a panel that's easily flat, plumb, and true right on top of an existing questionable substrate and yeah. then get you back to a situation, you know, to, uh, to, to put your tile work together. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I've, I've done the wet shimming method a lot and been able to get flat, plumb, square, all that good stuff that we need. I think the interesting thing out here, you know, it, for guys who come from a mud background, um, you're really looking to perfect the, you understand how, how valuable it is to get the substrate perfect. Um, and then the tile is secondary. That goes up e a lot easier. Uh, I've always said, if you start flat, you'll yeah. end flat. There you go. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's really, it's not a complicated thing. Yeah. You start yeah. flat, you'll end flat. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I remember, you know, as a younger guy, you know, learning the trade, I, I used to try to build up, correct the walls with, with thin set behind the tile. And that's, that's just chasing problems. Yeah. Chasing problems. That's a good it's way like, to put it. So. It's like having small children. What about you, Ryan? Have, has Schluter, <laughs> has Schluter uh, solved any of your, your problems or your customers' problems? You no, know, you know, recently it did on um, a shower I just finished for that same general contractor I've been working for for a long time. In fact, um, I was kind of wondering how I was going to sell him on the curdy board shower just because um, I wasn't looking forward to floating massive showers, uh, mixing mud and doing all that right now. Because you work alone? I work alone right now. So, I mean, just trying to get the precision with it. But he had a shower that he called me up on, and it's a zero entry for a lady that's going to be in a wheelchair soon. So we needed zero entry, but the slab was a post-tension slab. So they chipped out as much concrete as they could, but you have to keep enough uh, distance over those cables running under the post-tension slab. If you cut into one of those, it's uh, yeah, you no good things happen. <laughs> but um, he called me up and said, you know, we don't have room for hot mop. What are we going to do with this? And I went and put a, a six-foot level on it. Okay. Um, and we had enough. It was inch and a half uh, slopes. So we had quarter inch per uh, to go down. And I showed him all the Schluter information, got out the uh, book on it, showed him how it all works together, uh, brought the drain out, just – went through all the paperwork that Schluter provides us and he uh, was really happy to see that and he said you know so you can get this good you know the walls are flat you can yeah. you know it's a good product and I said no yeah it's all all I've been doing and it's you know top notch yeah so ended up being able to do all the prep uh, 
he came out and showed him with an eight foot level, just that it was dead on, mm-hmm. flat and square, and he was blown away by just how uh, professional the product is, how uh, good it really gets it, and how waterproof it is. And we uh, fixed that problem with if we would have done a hot mop and tried to float it, it would have been a huge hurdle. I mean, there's no way we could have done it. So from now on, he's, he's sold. He took the brochure and he studied about it. And next house we're doing, uh, we got four Schluter showers we're doing with linear drains. So, um, it's, they provide a lot of different things that can help you solve problems. It's a solution based company. Yeah. And that's really the evolution of Schluter from the very beginning is, has been overcoming uh, a problem in its origination during a change of uh, of guard of methods of installation. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Schluter had learned, you know, mud set. That was the the primary method of installation to be competitive. You had to keep up with the trend, and the trend was moving towards direct bonds. Yeah, and direct bonds opened up a lot of uh, uh, fissures in the you know in the issues of tile installations. You yeah, know, it's, it problem solved in the beginning was exposed edges of tile and mm-hmm. profiles helped uh you know fix that problem or overcome that mm-hmm. problem and objection so every every product that we make and everything that you you go on our site and look at you know originated for you know so solving an issue with some type of a tile installation even if it was just simplifying the process of the preparation to, to get you to the point of, of tile installation a little bit quicker yeah, that's where the money's at. Yeah, not in the prep work. Yeah, as much as we like to think that it's, you know, it's in the it's in the finished work and and uh, and that's how you get paid. Yeah, and, and I I really you know believe that as as tile contractors it's our it's our job to provide these solutions and to be the experts. So friends, I want to encourage you to get the education that you need, whether that's attending a, a free Schluter class where they they treat you right. Um, they feed you, you know, it's, it's interactive. It's, you know, you, you're sitting down part of the time, you're working part of the time or going to the NTCA website, getting some of the education they provide, attending some of their classes nationwide that they're offering. Um, however you want to take in the knowledge, be, be the expert because when Ryan's contractor came to him with a problem, he came to him looking for a, a solution. And the fact that Ryan was Johnny on the spot and able to provide this contractor that was so much value for that contractor because now he didn't lose the client. You know, he, he in, in essence, the, the contractor, the general contractor had a solution for his customer. So that, that provides value for him going forward. You know, Ryan was able to teach him something. Um, and, and going forward, they're, they're continuing to use the products, which makes Ryan happy because, you know, uh, mixing mud, getting out that hoe and, and uh, mud box is not fun when you're by yourself. <laughs> One of the things I had to add on that, yeah. you know, as far as, as what we've talked about today, when, and I do my classes and I, you know, I've learned from the other instructors that, and you heard me emphasize this here today, is how do you set yourself apart yeah. from your competition? If you're all doing the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, uh, who's going to win? Yeah, The guy that does it for the least amount of money, you know, is that really going to, is that the future of what we're doing? Yeah. If it is, if it is, it's a very short, short term. I'll find something else. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, my dad said they need ditch diggers too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prompted me to get an education. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's such a great point, Don, because, um, you know, you know, how do you sell value is, is a hot topic for my podcast. So, so how would you say contractors can, can sell more value? Is there can you point to other well, examples? Well, it's, it's mostly, I, I would think, is it's we put together a system of products. You know, we've got uh, a number of different things that all work in, in connection or coordination with each other. You can use as little as you deem necessary, maybe melding mud set in with uh, with some curdy and curdy drain installations, or maybe you go the full route. Yeah. Where you take a shower kit and everything that you've got in the box is to build one shower. You know, it's simplifying the process making it as easy for you to, to, uh, to prep as, as possible yeah. you know, to, to make that, uh, you know, a viable, um, solution for you. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? How are you selling value down here in Southern California? I know it must be a tough market. You know, it can be, it's a definitely a tough market and just going off of price, you know, you're, I'm never going to win the low bid. Yeah. If I did, then I must've missed something on the job. And it's not going to be profitable, but 
by showing them that, you know, we can come into a finished house, this million dollar house that's, they spent so much time and money to landscape and do all this. We can bring in this uh, Schluter Curdy product, do a clean installation, do a, you know, dust free yeah. demolition and just really provide top notch experience for the homeowner, mm -hmm. provide them with a product that looks professional. They can look it up online. They can see why it works well. Mm -hmm. And then be, beyond that, it's backed with a lifetime warranty. Are you selling the warranty? I'm selling the warranty to no. uh, everybody now. And I say, you know, you have to use all the different things together yeah. that work together. Yeah. But then this company will back you. And if you look, this is, you know, a top notch company that is going to stand behind what they make. Yeah. They're not going to try to get out of uh, covering what I'm doing yeah. and I'm going to install it right. They're going to back the product and you're going to end up with a product that you're not going to have to worry about again. Yeah. You know, I'd like to add a little something to the warranty because a lot of companies offer warranties and I've, you know, I've, I've, you know, struggled in various products over the years and, and what happens when you try to exercise these warranties. Mm -hmm. You know, Schluter's warranty is truly, and I've experienced this a few times, uh, not many, but it's truly a system warranty of insulation. It covers, you know, the cost of your labor, your materials, your inconvenience. Uh, you know, something happens, you know, there's going to be a Schluter, there guy, Schluter guy there to figure out what the problem was and if it indeed is our fault. You know, we're going to cover every aspect of that installation that's going to take place. And even if it's not our fault, it's our job as, as Schluter professionals to still assist you yeah. and get you back going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. you know, there's been many times where I've been to a job site where, you know, this really ain't my fault. You know, it's not Schluter's fault. There was some, some issues with installation. The very first time this ever happened to me, you know, I kind of put my hands together and said, well, I'm out of here because, you know, it's not our fault. Yeah. Well, they sent me back out there. Yeah. So let's, let's get this squared away first. Yeah. You know, let's, let's just not walk away. And they did use some of our products and it isn't working out for them. Okay. You know? And so I ended up going back out there the next day and contacted home and we got it squared, fixed up and, and, uh, done right. Wow. Cause then truly the, 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 the victim in that, in that particular case was the homeowner. Yeah. Yeah. It's their house. Is. That they couldn't use the shower for yeah. for uh, for a week, so wow. it was our directive to make it right first. Yeah, we'll figure out what happened later. Yeah, I, I like that mindset, and I like I like that that comes from the top and works its way down through the company, and and that affects us tile contractors too, because when we see our reps acting like that and the company that we use acting like that, then we're gonna all of a sudden start acting like that. And um, we've been talking about this in my Facebook group recently uh, due to some failures, some one of my you know, uh, group members had, and we were discussing how to fix it. And the solution is just, I mean, sometimes you just gotta fix it. Sometimes you gotta eat it as a contractor, as a business person. And the only, re the only way you can do that is if you're profitable, you know, it, it, if you plan for these types of things, if you're living hand to mouth. Um, you know, Schluter's not making any recommendations yeah. about the usage of the product that doesn't appear in the TCNA handbook. Yeah. You know, right. it's, it's a black and a white issue. Yeah. You know, a, uh, a, a lawyer friend of mine in the very beginning, when I was a tile installer, you know, made a recommendation to me, said, did you do this or didn't you do this? Yeah. At that point, I didn't do that. He says, well, just fix it. Yeah. Because so, <laughs> he he has a better lawyer than you do. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I love, that's a good one. And, and what's nice, friends, if you haven't been one one of these classes, class one we received a TCNA handbook. Class two we're receiving the the reference manual from the NTCA. So it's very industry focused. You know, like you said, we want to follow that manual. We want to do things by the book, and you know, come out with the best solution possible for everybody. So I appreciate that. No problem. What advice would you give your younger self, Ryan, if you could go back uh, a few years here? Oh, man. Uh, stay up with uh, the new stuff coming out because it can make it easier on you. That's for sure. Okay. And there's, there's always uh, some of these improvements are definitely things that will help you out. Another thing is to uh, really focus on the marketing and the sales, how you uh, really present yourself just because uh, – being the best tile installer you can do doesn't necessarily provide you with uh, running a successful business, but being able mm -hmm. to uh, create these relationships, getting to know your reps, 
having a good relationship with them so you can ask them questions yeah. and just keep uh, educating yourself. Something that, you know, I wish I would have done a long time ago because I probably would have had been farther ahead now, but it's okay. something that definitely helps you out. Yeah, that's solid advice. Appreciate it. Thank you for opening up and sharing that. How about yourself, uh, Don? What advice would you give your younger self? You know, I would go back and I would probably, very similar to Ryan, I, I would focus more on the on the education. Uh, you know, I don't see many people typing with typewriters anymore. We've moved to wood processors. There's new products that are fresh on the horizon, make things uh, a little bit easier for you to to do. And you know, and I always make that joke at the beginning of the class. How many people still uh, have a rotary dial phone in their house that they use regularly? And there'll be one or two usually. You know, and there's usually, you know, one or two, you know, born in mud guys in every class. And, and I kind of, uh, you know, you'll, you move through that. Yeah. And then you, you, you've got to look towards, and if I had looked forward, you know, earlier in my career, life would have been a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe I would still be doing tile work today and running a successful business had, you know, these products been more readily available when I was, uh, when I was still working all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. I know I was talking to somebody, a contractor here today during the workshop and he's a mud guy, you know, like most of us California guys. And he said, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I don't think I'm going to use the product yet. And I said, that's fine. Like, you know, you don't have to use the product, but it's, it's good you're here. It's good that you know how it works because when a contractor or a homeowner calls you and says, do you have a solution for this problem that, you know, maybe mud can't fix? Um, and then you could say, well, you know, I did take this class. I, I can, you know, call my rep and put together this product and we can test it out. You know, you know, one of the things in these classes that's really important to me when we, uh, when you walk out at the end of the day, whether it's a part one or part two, I'm not so much concerned that you are going to make the immediate switch to our, to our materials. Yeah. It's not really presented to us at the, you know, through education meetings that we do that we're salespeople yeah. you know, as, as individuals in the education department. Our primary focus is is education. Okay. And, and I think if we if we educate properly, if we present the products, uh, you know, in in the proper light. When you leave here at the end of the day, I will. You'll make your own decision. Yeah. You know, if you don't choose me today to uh, to use some products, then I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I know that exactly. You know what you said or what you've said that uh, you now have this little bit of information in your tool belt or, or in your bank of knowledge uh, that you're carrying around with you, that there's a solution there for something that you're going to encounter in the uh, sometime in the future. Yeah. And you're going to think back as well. I wonder what that Schluter thing I looked at. This might be the time. Yeah, exactly. That a world. Exactly. Yep. You never know when you're going to need that that tool that you might only pull out once a year or once every few years. But it's it's nice when you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you a, a book reader, Don? Uh, I, I I should read more. All right. I, I listen to a lot of audio books. Oh, you do? Yeah, that's. I, I travel on an airplane. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I sit in airports a lot. I have a couple of books that I am currently reading, but uh, with technology evolving, like we just discussed, audio books seem to be a, a real good lazy man's way to, <laughs> to read information. Well, I'm with you there. I I do a lot of that myself. Do you have any business book recommendations? Or? Um, you know, I there was a. A book that I had that, that when I first started in sales, mm -hmm. there was a, a series of, of, of uh, I think it's Brian Tracy books okay. that someone gave me about the, the basics of running a business, education, organizing yourself, organizing your skills, and, uh, and recognize what those are and work towards those strengths. Okay. So, I mean, the book was you know, long yeah. book and there was a lot of information, yeah. but recognizing what your strengths are yeah, and focusing on what you do well. I like that. And work on what you don't do well. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. you might have to do that as well someday. Yeah. Yeah. We all have strengths and weaknesses. And I think if we can focus on our strengths first and, and be like, okay, I, I'm working on these things. I'm working on these five, six things. I'm going to focus on these two or three things that I'm really good at and, and let everybody know that I'm good at that. You know, and then I can I can kind of um, continue from there. Ryan, how about yourself? Are you a business book reader? Or? Um, you know, I I have a list of them that I want to get to that okay. I've seen through the Tile Money uh, forums. But the the one that I've read that's helped out is the uh, Markup and Profit book, like most have read. Yeah, Michael Stone. Um, Michael Stone. That's an excellent book. Just it's so important to understand your numbers mm -hmm. and 
I think I appreciate that more and more each day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, I, I definitely want to start checking out a lot of the recommendations that have come through the tile money forum. Yeah. Um, just Good. getting into the podcast and the forum just really helps you to see that getting to understand the sales process and the marketing and the relationship aspect of it, there's a lot to learn there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, podcasts and and uh, was this is something I've just really been exposed to in the last month. Okay, I, I know they've been out there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I started listening to um, a couple of different things I downloaded, and it's kind of ironic that you know we have this conversation a month later, yeah. and realizing that uh, that's what you do or, or part of what you do. Yeah, is you know I've actually downloaded your podcast. And, oh, thank you. And now I'm you know kind of working through a, an episode to moving into my second one. So yeah, yeah. you know it's something I'm adding. Okay, and it's not my strength, but I'm adding to my little uh, repertoire of information. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I really um, when I started listening to podcasts and audiobooks, that's when my life changed because uh, you know I. I can read. I know how to read, but I, I just rather don't physically read. I, I, it's just, I don't know, you know, as a contractor, I have usually 30 to 45 minutes in the truck. So it, it's a, it's an easy way for me to, to, to digest information and knowledge through, through the, my yeah. ears you yeah. know, straight into my brain. So that's the way I do it too. Um, there is of course value in reading, but, um, if you can only listen, you know, that's, that's the second best, I think, um, maybe the first best for some of us. Definitely. Well, Ryan, I really appreciate you taking the time to record an episode. Don, the same to you. I'm enjoying, and I'm looking forward to, to tomorrow. All right. What do we have planned tomorrow? Tomorrow, we're going to move into the actual waterproofing aspect of uh, creating our showers that we mm -hmm. built. Today, we built the structure. Mm -hmm. uh, we installed, so we almost installed some Dietra. We'll get there in the morning, but we'll take care of all the banding, all the waterproofing, all the connection points to, to make, uh, you know, full working showers out of the out of the projects that we're yeah. working on yeah so tomorrow will be a fun day tomorrow is the most intense in the detail yeah of what we do there'll be the most for you to do in any one of our classes any every day that we do a class i speak less and you do more okay so, you know in day one part one you know i speak for uh for almost six hours yeah. day two it's four hours today it was about three hours of time tomorrow you know, you're taking over. Okay. Your job will be, you know, out there and you'll have uh, freelance of the facility of all the materials until you're done. Yeah. Or satisfied with what you came to create. Yeah. And we have, what do we have? Four different modules, um, yeah, different we have, styles. We have eight pods. There's, eight pods. There's eight workstations and there's four different styles creating a little bit wow. different situation in each one. Yeah. Some barrier free, some heated floors, some in, inside shower heated floors building structure of pony walls, building different types of benches, uh, putting in niches, some curbs, uh, just, we, we present as much challenge to the installations as we possibly can do in our, uh, in our workshop series. Yeah. So I think that's challenging for us to present a, enough information to the groups. I yeah. always, I always think that until I get to the, to the workshop and, and it's, brand new to you yeah it's brand new to you for the most part yeah for me i've done it 90 times yeah do we really need to change it maybe not interesting yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you tell me at the end of the well, day tomorrow <laughs> well i'm enjoying it i mean it, the days go by quick um ryan's in one module with a team and i'm in a, a different module with a team he, i saw you split us up on purpose yeah Don. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> and, and ryan thinks he's gonna win win the bag and i think i'm gonna win the the well, I'm the judge. We're trying hard, <laughs> so you know you all can be nice to me. But we're gonna we're gonna look we're looking forward to tonight. We're gonna go out to a nice restaurant and yeah. have um you know Schluter takes us all out. So we appreciate that and get to associate with the reps a little bit and dive into the the um what's it called when you when you work on relationships networking networking. Thank you. That's why I broke you. I all lost. Up. I, I lost. Force you to talk to somebody you don't know. And that's and that's a beautiful thing. It's something that we can all work on. So. All right. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode um, of Tile Money, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Luke. Thank you very much. All right, Tile friends. Did you enjoy that interview as much as I enjoyed hosting it? I hope that's the case. I hope these episodes are making you look at your business in a new way and giving you ideas that you can implement. 
my sincere hope is that you are finding at least one nugget per episode that you can take and implement into your business and improve your business. All right, so now we've got another Tile Money tip with Ron Nash, and these of these tips are sponsored by Lady Cree International. Now, Ron and I, we've been talking about negotiation tips, and recently we've been talking about something that Ron likes to call the defense against the dark arts, all right? The dark arts are something we all are up against as business owners. These are negotiation tactics that are being used against us. So it's a common common thing, and every you know everybody does it. Uh, homeowners, co- uh, general contractors, whoever we're working for, they're savvy. They're trying to get the best deal. So the one we're talking about today is called the bogey approach, and what this is is uh, something that we've all come up against probably on a daily basis. Is when a customer says, "This is all I have. This is all the money I have." And they're trying to get a few hundred dollars less, 500 less. They're trying to get 10, 10% less, 20% less, whatever the case might be. So Ron is helping us uh, with some counter tactics. So I know you're going to benefit from listening to these counter tactics. Uh, and friends, if you're enjoying this episode, I want to encourage you to please like, subscribe, and share this episode. Share it with another tile contractor and subscribe to it so that you are notified when I release new episodes. All right, friends, I hope you're enjoying your week and weekend. Take care out there and uh, keep making improvements and keep reaching out to me. I'm really getting to, I'm really enjoying getting to know some of you. All right. The bogey approach. Okay. This is a great win-win tactic. And and the bogey sounds like this. Hey, look, um, this is all I've got to spend. Look, I, I got to get my backsplash done. All I have to spend is two thousand dollars, but I want this fancy glass, you know, hand cut, um, you know, handmade, all my children's initials perfectly uh, it, uh, over every single outlet, and I want it to be a custom tile that we got from, you know, handmade by monks in Israel. You know, or yeah, something like yeah. that. Something it's always something top. crazy like that. Um, but they, but they often will say, you know. This is all I've got to spend. Right. Okay. So first of all, be very skeptical of that um, because all I've got to spend usually doesn't, it's usually what they want to spend, but there's a very different, very different when the deal winds up going down, understanding what people actually want versus what they want to spend. That's the art of deal making, right? Yeah. So you understand what they want. You understand what they want to spend. And then the magic that you do in deal creation is getting those two to merge together. If you understand what I mean by that. Yeah. All right. So, um, so the bogey, this is all I've got. I've only got $2,000 to spend. Okay. So usually sellers here break down and then they start working backwards on their number. Have you ever had that happen to you? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so common. This yeah. is actually one of the most common things that, that I see that general contractors pull. Look, I have this in the, in the estimate. You know, this is how we won the job. I have to be able to get this done for X. And, and oftentimes that X is significantly lower than what the job actually needs. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is, this is very common. So my tactics that I use for that is once again, I always flinch. Like, are you for reals? This is yeah. all you got? Yeah. You know, uh, do you realize? And then I immediately would hit the scope again. All right. You realize that you've got handmade glass tile. You've got, you know, this stuff costs X a square foot. That's just cost. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what to do about that. That's, yeah. that's just right there. You're close to your budget. Then I've got to be able to install it with something that I want to take a warranty on because the system, yada, yada, yada. You see what I'm saying? So you immediately go into the scope. And you make them realize that, hey, maybe they're, they are got a champagne desires on a beer budget, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to help you, though. This is where you become the guide. So on the, bug, on the bogey, as soon as someone says, this is all I've got, I want you to consider yourself as the guide. I will now guide you on how to spend your money very, very effectively to help you get close to what you want and what you can afford. If you put yourself in that situation, then you will be able to create a budget that's that's 
realistic for what they have to spend if it truly is insurance settlements happen like this all the time. Look, the insurance company only gave me it only gave me fifteen hundred dollars to do a two thousand dollar job. Okay. All right, well, great. I understand that. Here's what you can get for fifteen hundred. Yeah. By the way, here's what you can get for two thousand. Hey, and and just to put this out here, so to give you something to consider, here's what you can get for twenty five hundred. Yeah. Now I will tell you that you can't get everybody to go up to the twenty five hundred package. Yeah. But I will tell you that twenty five percent of them will. Mm-hmm. And that's better than zero. Yeah, for sure. Right. And so you, in this particular case, I like to do, I like to create budgets that fit inside of what they said, but I also would like to give them aspirational considerations so that they can do the very powerful by what they want versus only buying what they can afford or what they purely need. Understanding yeah. that there is significant differences between wants what they can afford and needs. And if nobody bought what they wanted, then Louis Vuitton would be out of business. Lamborghini would be out of business. Um, yeah. You know, Mercedes would be out of business. So understand that you have to be able to provide those packages. Cool. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. It makes a lot of sense. And how many of us friends have, have went to buy a vehicle and, and had a, had a budget in mind even, but yep. we walked out with leather seats and that wasn't in our budget. We walked out with, you know, five hundred dollars, a thousand, five thousand more than we actually wanted to spend or intended to spend. But because we have wants, we we ended up purchasing more. So by the way, in the car situation, the dealerships always do it like this. Yeah, you know, but look, that's only ten dollars more a month will yeah, get you leather. Well, how would a tile contractor do that? Listen, that's only five cents a square foot more to do X, or that's only 10 cents a square foot more to get an upgraded warranty. You see, you see what I'm saying? It's the same tactic, exactly the same tactic, but it's a great way to test the bogey. You test the bogey. And then it's also a great way to give them aspirational things. So it's a good thing. You're Mm -hmm. the guide though. You are the guide to help them get what they want. 